Welcome. We are combining like terms today. So this is uh, the idea behind this. Is, of course, is we're, we're looking at the very basics of algebra. We're not doing anything super fancy. We're not doing weird stuff like calculus students do. It's cool, but it's weird. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Like terms. Uh, two terms are separated by either addition or subtraction. Now, technically, they're separated by addition, and if subtraction is there, that means you're adding a negative. So be cautious on that. Uh, but like terms are terms that have identical variables, first and foremost. And then the second piece is they also have to have exactly the same exponents on those variables. So I've got a few examples here, and I'll explain each one of them and, and how to work them. So what to do? Now, this isn't exactly how it works. There's some underlying structure there, but this is effectively what it looks like. So what to do? If you have like terms in an expression, combine them by doing whatever sign is in front. All right, so we've talked about in the past, or hopefully by this point, you've talked about terms versus factors. We're going to look at these coefficients in front of the variables, and that's the thing we're going to combine. So uh, we're looking at the x's and making this like term determination. Are these terms, each one of these things is a term, are these terms in fact like? Do they have the same variable, x, yes. Do they have the same exponent on that variable, in which case there is no exponent so it's a one, yes. Okay then, in that case, look at the front of them and do what it says. So 4 minus 2 is 2. And then take that common, that common variable and just throw it there on the end. That's it. That's all you have to do. Now I'm sure that if you're a little bit more advanced and you're like, well, okay, that's not all you... Okay, structurally, that's all you have to do. <laughs> just because yours looks nastier doesn't mean it doesn't work the same way. All right. Moving on up we have this little expression here and we're gonna again combine those like terms we're always checking though so we have a y here we don't have a y here but we have a y here so since 14y and 2y both have y's in them they have the same variables and each of those y's has an exponent of 1 so they have the same exponent we can combine those again by looking at the numbers in front so we take that 14 and we take that plus 2 and we do what it says 16 and we throw that common variable at the end now the question becomes well, yeah but what do you do with this guy well the X isn't the same as Y they are not like terms so it would be it would be the mathematical equivalent of trying to add um, a piece of grass to a rock and then magically getting a car <laughs> it's like, happens in seven days to die doesn't exactly happen here uh, so we can't do anything with it we can't combine it with anything so we just relist it that's it and that's the answer that's all that's all that combining like terms is it's just a way to kind of shrink the size of the problem down to something more manageable all right moving on to the last one here we now this is a me thing this doesn't have to be a you thing I go through and I start with the highest exponents and I go through and find those like terms first. And then I put a, a box around them to include the sign in front of them. The reason I include the sign is the sign is going to tell me what to do. So because x squared and x squared both have the same variable and they have the same exponent, which in this case is 2 we can go ahead and combine these like terms by doing whatever's in front. So this is 3 plus 4 is going to give us 7x squared. But Phil, could you have put the negative x first? Absolutely. You can put these in any order you wish. It doesn't really matter. Now, that's not to say there aren't conventions, and that's not to say that there aren't instructors out there that will force you to put it in a specific order. Um, the way that I tend to write them is to my advantage 
And of all of the different functions and, and equations and expressions that I've seen over the years, I tend to write them in decreasing exponents, but in alphabetical order first. So all of my x terms will come first, but then decrease in exponents. And then all of my y terms will come after that, decreasing in exponents. Um, I do that for the equation of a circle. I'm terrible at visualizing things in 3D. So equation of a circle, equation of a sphere, that sort of thing. Ugh. Anywho, moving on. Finishing this up, we notice that this negative x here is just by itself. There's no other x terms. So we can't combine them with the x squared because they don't share the same exponent. So we just bring that guy down. <clears throat> and then finally, this 3y. Well, there's, it's, again, not really doing anything. It's got no friends. Apparently, it's just going to hang out in the corner. So we just throw them at the end, too. And that's your final answer. Again, the order of these terms doesn't matter. You can write them in any order you wish. I don't care. Um, you will find, if you continue on in mathematics, you will find your own method of doing this that makes it easy on you. And ultimately, isn't that the idea? Just to make it easy. I do have other videos out there if you want to know why this has to work the way it works. It's actually because of the distributive property. And I'm certain that you can find somebody out there way smarter than me that can explain it to you. All right. Hope this helps. Take care. If you have a comment, go ahead and leave it below. Otherwise, good luck, and I'll be rooting for you.